TEDx. So, how do you go from being a passive citizen, one that believes that the world's greatest challenges are best left in the hands of someone else, to an empowered citizen, one that believes that their own actions in life can play a significant role in the solutions? For me, the journey started in high school when my mom told me that she had cancer. And for the next five years, she went through what seemed like endless rounds of chemotherapy, radiation treatment, and that had a profound effect on myself and my entire family. But both times, she beat the disease. Others, though, they're not as fortunate. Still, in the United States alone, over 500,000 people die of cancer every year. That's 1,500 a day. The experience with my mom got me thinking about my own life and if I'd have to be as brave as she was someday. It got me thinking about other families and people going through the same type of situation. But it also got me thinking about what a world would look like without cancer. We've all had feelings like this at some point in our lives. You come up against the ugliness in the world, and you think to yourself, I wish things could be different. Maybe you think, I wish I could make them different. But unfortunately for most people, those thoughts start and stop right there. I know this because I was one of them. So why does that happen? Why do we hesitate to take those first steps towards something that we truly believe in? For me, it was always that feeling of, who am I to go up against something like cancer? It was that little voice of self-doubt in my head that always seemed to get really loud every time, every time I wanted to do something. But there was also something else building up inside me, something a lot stronger. It was a, it was a mixture of compassion, purpose, and love. And eventually, those feelings would find me the courage at age 24 to say to myself, I don't want to sit still anymore. So I did what I thought was the next logical step, and I went and I started researching cancer organizations in San Diego, and I found a bunch of them, so it seemed really promising. But the more I looked into it, the more frustrated I became. It seemed way too hard for someone like myself to get involved with any organization like that. So seemingly out of options, I, I went to my roommates for some help, and we sat down, meeting of the minds, if you will, and we said, well, you know, let's just figure out what we're all good at and then we'll make a fundraiser out of that. Five minutes went by, 10 minutes went by. Surely we're good at something, right? We're only 22. But... And then my friend, who I'm pretty sure wasn't paying attention to any of this, spoke up and he said, you know, we're really good at drinking beer. <laughs> and whether that was a joke or not, we took him seriously, and we decided right then and there to host a pub crawl for charity research. Now all we needed was a name. Luckily, the movie Anchorman, if you've seen it before, was on in the background for the fourth time that day. <laughs> and Will Ferrell's character, Ron Burgundy, seemed to speak to us like some sort of divine intervention. And he said, you stay classy, San Diego. And we had our name, and the first annual Stay Classy pub crawl was born. Fundraising sites didn't exist at the time, and our friends weren't on social networks yet. So we organized this thing old school. We, took, we made phone calls, we sent emails, we actually printed physical posters that we went and hung up around town. To our surprise, over 75 people showed up to this thing, and we donated $1,000 to the American Cancer Society. And that's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but for someone like me, who had literally never made a donation his entire life, this was not only monumental, it was energizing. And by us taking that first step, without even realizing it, we had transformed ourselves from passive citizens to empowered ones. So we hosted another event, and then another one, and then another one, until we were hoping, hosting dozens of events around town, anything from music festivals to 5K races. And then our attendees started to come up to us, and they said, hey, we want to raise money for the causes that we're most passionate about. Can you help us? And we said, sure. So we immediately rushed to find someone that knew how to code a website. We cobbled it together real quick so they could do that. It was a piece of crap, but it worked. And then something amazing happened. All of those people that we had empowered to pick their own causes and to go out and fundraise for themselves, we started raising money like never before. All of a sudden, we were planting trees around San Diego, helping to fund homeless shelters, helping to get food for the victims of the wildfires. 
And all of a sudden, our small little pub crawl had become something so much more meaningful. It had become an online platform for thousands to band together under a common purpose. But what we were seeing there in San Diego firsthand was really only a small example of a much larger trend that was happening across the world. Empowered citizens everywhere were coming together and taking to the internet to organize themselves in ways that they really had never done before. Soon, all physical boundaries would be erased, and our empowered citizens in San Diego would be able to unite seamlessly with the empowered citizens of London, of Tokyo, of any city around the world to fight for what they believed in. It's amazing to me that it's already been eight years since we hosted that first pub crawl to take our first steps. It's also amazing what's happened in those eight years. We've seen massive advances in technology. All of us as humans are closer than we ever have been before. It's absolutely incredible. But now, in today's world, it's not so much a matter of how to take those first steps. It's a matter of a personal decision of whether you want to or not. If you want to host a fundraiser, a pub crawl even, if you want to sign a petition or start one, if you want to volunteer your time, those are only a few clicks away. And today in this world, many people are already making that decision at a scale really we've never seen before. Just this year alone, millions of empowered citizens have come together to fight for and fund things like veteran-led disaster relief during Hurricane Sandy, fighting to remove pink slime from our kids' food, backing the bullied bus monitor, ending corrective rape in South Africa, and a little video called Coney 2012 that opened the, opened the world's eyes to an invisible war. It honestly is an exciting time to be alive. It's a, it's a time where we can ask ourselves the question, what do we all want to accomplish together? And the answer doesn't seem that unrealistic anymore. For me, it's helping to save the lives of those 5,000 people that die of cancer every year. So ask yourself, what do you want to see accomplished? The path to becoming an empowered citizen has never been easier, and our reach has never been greater. But that decision to make that first step will always be yours. The good news is, if a guy like me can do it, then I'm positive anyone else can. Thank you very much.